This is the third in the series on MRI of the shoulder, looking at MRI of the biceps tendon. And in this one, we're looking at the MRI appearance of tears of the biceps tendon and also the MRI appearance of uh, biceps tendon rupture. In our previous two videos, we looked at the normal appearance and also of the appearance of tendinosis and tenosynovitis. So if you missed those, go back and have a look at those before you see this one. But um, this, this particular video is on the appear MRI appearance of biceps tendon tears and ruptures. Uh, again, this was part of a, a webinar series done with Hitachi Medical Systems Singapore. So now let's look at tears. What, what do tears look like? So tears, also a high signal, but you need to look at the degree of signal here. So if you look at this image, this is basically a very bright signal compa comparable to fluid around there. This is a small amount of fluid here. So this is more of a fluid signal. This is not an intermediate signal. So when you see this fluid signal, this is what tells you that there's a tear. The tendon itself otherwise looks relatively okay. We've got a nice black tendon elsewhere. It's relatively well defined. So we just have a, a partial tear, which is within the tendons. So an intrasubstance tear of the biceps tendon. The other appearances here, we've got degeneration, but we've also got small areas of tearing. So you're really looking for these areas where there is increased signal similar to fluid signal. And if we look at this case, this is a, a, another appearance of tearing where you have a tendon that is incredibly thin. This is not the normal size of a biceps tendon. It's, it's very, very thin. So what's happened is that most of the biceps tendon fibers here are torn. There are only a few fibers left. This is what we're seeing, the remnant fibers. So this is a partial tear as well, but it just has a different appearance where we've got thinning of the tendon. In the previous one, the tendon was uh, okay in size. Signal was within the tendon. Here we've got a tendon that's actually really small and thin in size. Uh, there's increased signal within it. There's probably some degeneration in the residual tendon fibers. But you would describe this as severe thinning of this extra-articular portion of the uh, biceps tendon um, in keeping with partial tearing or severe partial tearing. Okay, let's look, at, uh, let's look at a case. Let's look at this patient here. So this is the PowerPoint that we just saw. And here's the biceps tendon, and you can appreciate that the signal within the biceps tendon is the same as fluid signal. So this, is, uh, this would be described as a partial tear of the uh, extra articular portion of the biceps tendon. Let's look at a, a different case. We look at the one that we just saw, which was severe thinning. And let's look at this biceps tendon. Again, this patient's had an arthrogram. So there's, there's a fair bit of fluid in the, in the joint and there's also fluid within the uh, biceps tendon sheath. But you can see that within the tendon sheath itself, this is the residual biceps tendon. It's way too small. So uh, a different appearance of uh, a torn biceps tendon. You've just actually lost fibers and the residual tendon is very thin. So this will eventually rupture. The third bit we're gonna look at is complete tear. So when you actually have a rupture of the biceps tendon, what does that look like? So the first thing is that you have an empty tendon sheath. Okay, so if it's ruptured, basically what happens is that the, the two components pull apart. So any tendon, any ligament is on a slight stretch. There's a slight tension in those ligaments and tendons. So what happens is that when it breaks, it pulls apart. It doesn't just sort of sit there like that with a little break in between. The, the ends actually pull apart, a variable amount. So the first thing is that we have an empty tendon sheath. The, the, the tendon sheath is still within the bicipital groove, so it doesn't mean, it's not a dislocation. So the bicep tendon hasn't dislocated out, which is why you're not seeing it. And this is really all you need to make the diagnosis. But what we do is actually try and find the ends when it, when it ruptures, it's usually it's not ruptured from the attachment. It's not from that superglenoid tubercle. The rupture occurs uh, within the tendon itself, usually this intraarticular portion of the tendon, because that's where you get a lot of tendinosis. And often we'll see a little stump. So this is the residual stump of the tendon. 
The distal portion you may or may not see because it can pull down out of our field of view quite a lot. So you often don't see it, but generally you'll be able to find this proximal portion. Here we've got a different patient where we've got, ten so we're low down, here's the tendon, tendinosis is enlarged, it's hyper intense, but it's an intermediate signal. Come a bit more proximally, empty tendon sheath. And here you can see that we've got two colors here. Here's the blue of where the residual tendon is. This is the stump. And this is the portion where the tendon is missing. So we've got an absent tendon in here. So this hasn't retracted all that much. It's just a, a small amount, but we've got empty tendon tendon sheath in keeping with, tendon, uh, with a, a rupture. Okay, so let's have a, a quick look at this. You can see uh, the cross-reference where we are. So here's the biceps tendon sheath. We really don't have anything in it. You can often see this bits of debris, but that's not the tendon. This is just some debris within the tendon sheath. So we've got an empty tendon sheath where it's really unclear where it's been pulled back to. We just say that it's, you know, you can't see the um, the distal stump. And if we're looking for the proximal portion, the best way to do that is to actually go to the coronal scans, find the superior labrum, and we know anatomically that it attaches, the bicep tendon attaches to the superior labrum and the supraglenoid tubercle. So we follow it and see if we can find a stump. So here's something that looks like a, a biceps, and then it just sort of falls down and ends here. So this is the stump of the biceps tendon, which just sort of sits down here. There's a big gap all the way down here where it's uh, ruptured and pulled back. So often you will be able to say that there is a, a residual tendon stump, but uh, the distal portion is, is difficult to see, at or mostly it's difficult to see because it's out of our field of view. So what we've covered today is really the, the tendon and the proximal tendon anatomy. Uh, the scan planes that we need to assess various portions of that um, uh, proximal tendon, what a normal tendon looks like, and this is really important. It's just, if you don't know normal, you cannot work out what abnormal is. And then we've looked at what we look for in terms of tendinosis and tenosynovitis, uh, tears, partial tears, and then uh, ruptures.